Hi all, hope all is well. Today's video, I just wanted to provide a bit of an update in regards to the progress of my electrolytic cell. If you go ahead and watch a couple of my previous videos, you'll see how the electrolytic cell was initially set up. I'll quickly explain it now as well. So this hose here was connected. There was no cap actually in the middle. So I've gone ahead and put an isolation tap in there. Um, the reason for doing that is so you can keep the fluids separate once the process has been completed. There's also membrane on either side. So there's cotton membrane on this side. There's also cotton membrane in that side as well. I also went ahead and put in a couple of iron rods as well. So there's two iron rods on each side there now, as well as the carbon rod as well. And the reason for doing that is all about efficiency. So you can see it bubbling away there. The iron's doing really well. However, it's not without its adverse reef, uh, its adverse effects. So on this side here, you can see the color of the water. And that happened in a matter of 10 minutes. So it's actually oxidizing all the rust or all the iron from the iron bars into that container there. So normally um, what would happen is you'd get your chlorine developing on the positive side and I'm assuming that is the case at this stage. However, it's also oxidizing as well, which means it's rusting as we're doing the process, um, which is pretty interesting. However, I could reverse that effect and the way you'd reverse it is by simply taking the negative clamp and putting it over where the positive is and reversing them. However, you would lose your sodium hydroxide on this side. I've also um, recently done a bit more research into where the sodium hydroxide is in the solution. So if you go ahead and watch some of my previous videos, you'll see a layer of white material that builds up on the bottom over time. And what that actually is, it is sodium carbonate, as I suspected, I wasn't too sure. I have tried to make a few soap samples out of it and the soap samples have not been very successful. There is a little bit of sodium hydroxide in it, so I am getting a bit of a reaction. However, it's not the reaction that I'm chasing. So at this stage, what, is being, um, what has been discovered and through more and more research is that it's actually the bubbles that count. So all these bubbles that are forming on these iron rods, that's the sodium hydroxide and it dissolves into the clear liquid of the water. So I was on the right track initially um, with the clear liquid. So I need to process it, evaporate the water off it, and by evaporating the water off it, I'll actually get a concentrated sodium hydroxide solution, um, which is exactly what I'm chasing. Now there's a couple of ways of doing that. Recently I've been doing it through the still to concentrate it into a solid form um, through the air still. So there is a video on that as well. You can go back and watch a couple of the previous videos. There is also a playlist of this as well. And it's, um, I believe it's how to make soap from seawater is the playlist. So you'll find that under, under the channel as well. So at this stage here, the best thing I can do for the time being is just allow it to process. Um, hopefully I can process it until the bubbles stop forming. Um, by doing that, I'm assured then that all of the salt has actually reacted through the electrolysis process and all the sodium hydroxide that I can make from the substance has been made. This side over here, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it. I think um, I might do a bit of an experiment with it. Of course, let it run its process. It will become darker and darker as time goes on um, because of all the oxide that's forming on that side, so the rust. Um, however, the chlorine should still be in the water as well. And there may be a way of extracting that, but I guess we'll see um, in a future video. At this stage here, that's how it's looking. It's a bit of a wild setup. Still very interesting. I should also take the time to mention that on the previous video, if you go back and have a look, you will find that white solution on the bottom. And as I said earlier in this video, I um, have confirmed that that is sodium carbonate or natrium, which is exactly what the Egyptians used to use to mummify their dead, so their mummies. Um, and the reason that formed was, as I suspected, was that the sodium was actually mixing with the carbon rod, the electrode here, the, that one there. So because it was mixing with that carbon rod there, 
that was producing natrium, which was actually floating to the bottom. So if you go back and watch those videos, you'll see it reacting with the carbon rod itself and flaking off like snow. And then it laid on the bottom. Um, so it is a very efficient way of producing sodium carbonate, but not a very efficient way of producing sodium hydroxide. Uh, and that's not to say that all the fluid, that all the clear fluid above that layer of white is not um, useful because it still is useful. We, um, in fact, I may even spend this afternoon processing the clear liquid um, and then concentrating it to see if I can get a decent reaction by using an excessive amount of, of the sodium hydroxide solid form that I retrieved from it and using it with the 17 grams of oil that I have been using for all of my sample tests. We'll see how it goes anyway. And that's pretty much it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.